So good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening to all the trainers who are in our first sustainability education trainer meetup today. I'm Ling Do, uh, project and event manager of Warchef. I, I am also um, the program manager of Feed the Planet from Warchef side. So um, first of all, a warm welcome to all of you who, who who are taking your time from work, from family time to join us today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on board, both as trainer and as audience of this um, webinar. So I usually would have Chef Chris Kotke, and the plan is to have him today as the main host of the sessions. Unfortunately, we just had, I just hop up a call with him and he, unexpectedly is on his way um, to the airport, but he will try to join us later in the call um, just to say hi and say a few words. Uh, but most, um, most importantly, I would be your host today. I will just be the one who give you the update. And um, per the agenda that I previously shared with you, um, we will have a session where um, you as a trainer can give a feedback about the program and your experience so far. I can already see a lot of familiar name in the chat box and also on the participation list. So thank you so much for, for being with us today. Um, I will just first start by um, quickly showing you um, a presentation that I have prepared um, so that we have um, a better idea of what is going on. Uh, for sustainability educations and um, what are the new updates that we have for you. So can you also please tell me in the chat box if you can see my screen. Um, yes, I guess this works. Thank you. Thank you for the confirmation. So uh, I just want to start by quickly um, in reintroduce Fit the Planet. How do we started with all these initiatives? Fit the Planet was founded back in 2012 as um, a workshop initiative, first of all, uh, to inspire sustainable food consumptions among communities and culinary professionals. Also, we have um, the purpose of supporting people in need through education and professional culinary training. And we work with two main partners, uh, Electric Food Foundation and Isaac around the world. They are our global partner in the program. But for, um, for each country, we also work with local collaborative partner um, on multiple projects. Um, and uh, apart from sustainability education for culinary professional, which you must be very familiar about, so I would not repeat that part. We also work on three other projects. Um, there's Food Waste Challenge, which is our four month challenge to encourage all the restaurateurs to cut down food waste at their own uh, food service facilities. This is still ongoing. Um, then we have Food Hero Challenge, where we encourage all volunteer, can be chef, can be um, trainer, or can be just anyone who is interested in Feed the Planet and are aware of our program to go out, take the toolkit that we developed and teach a group of kids about sustainable eating habits. Um, last but not least, we have Like a Chef. This is our um, culinary um, training program for the underprivileged. The idea is to equip them with professional culinary skills so they can start to work in professional kitchens. We started back in 2017. Um, we encountered a little bit of difficulty last year, just um, same as many other projects within the hospitality industry. Uh, but we are resuming training this year and we are looking into setting up new center in France, in Romania, and also in the US. So if you have the time, please read, feel free to reach out. I can uh, gladly send you more information about all these projects and it would be awesome if you can join us, not just for sustainability educations, but also in other Feed the Planet projects. And if you have any projects that you are currently working on that um, share the same vision with Feed the Planet, please also connect with me um, so we can look into a way to collaborate. 
So uh, on to today's sessions, that's enough for background. Um, we will first of all um, go through some updates about sustainability education for culinary professionals. Um, as some of you um, might have noticed, we introduced a new um, section to sustainability education back in December last year. So we're going to talk about that. Um, then uh, we also refreshed the process to up, uh, for trainer to up apply and then uh, for trainer to register the new training way. So I will also address that later in this presentation. And last but not least, I will just go quickly about um, the certifications that you will get as trainer, as well as the certification that your student will get after they finish their training. And after that, I think the most important sections of today's sessions is to hear from you as our global trainers. I, um, I have um, I have previously re reached out to some of the trainers and asked them to give their feedback and experience about the trainings that they have been doing throughout the months. But uh, we also have an open open forum section where please feel free to raise your hand and um, we can talk more about your work and your plan with sustainability education this year's or the years to come. And last but not least, we'll go we'll have a Q&A section, which is quite similar. But if you have any questions, please feel free to drop it in the Q&A box anytime during the, the webinar. So um, I can address this at the end of this meeting. So if there's no questions so far, um, we will then move on to the updates. Uh, this is a lovely photo from uh, Silver School Culinary Academy um, in Namibia. I think Chef Terry can recognize his student he's here, uh, who's just say hi in the chat. Um, this is a lovely school that have been um, teaching our program, I think, for the last two years, two or three years. Uh, Chef Terry, maybe you can remind me and everyone on the call later. Um, about your experience uh, teaching the sustainable education at your school. Uh, but we always use um, Chef Terry School as a great example of how the program is applied in, the, um, um, in a more extended context. So it, it is incorporated into his um, regular training um, with his culinary student, and it has been going on for the last two years. So um, on the next slide, um, I just want to remind um, us a little bit about the design of the course. So the idea is to bring change to the world um, by equipping individual with knowledge about culinary uh, sustainability. As chefs, I think um, you are, and I am also in the best positions to talk about food and um, how to change food consumption habit. Um, this can start by targeting students, targeting your staff, targeting everyone around you, and then it can be extended to food service and then your regional and local communities. And eventually the idea is to change the world with, with um, well, with better idea about how to preserve the environment and um, respect the food around us. So how do we do that? Um, I think many of you, all of you must have been familiar with, with the design, like this the specific design of the course. It is divided into eight sections for eight days. Um, we first talk about introduction to sustainability. Then we go with um, agriculture, food from the dirt. Um, then on the third day, we also continue with agriculture, but we focus more on animal husbandry. Then seafood, energy, water, waste management, and last um, but not least, this is a new section that we just added last year about sustainable nutrition. So um, we uh, we had um, this uh, we had organized a webinar for this section back in this for first of December twenty twenty. The recording is available online. The materials have already been shared with you. But if you have a hard time assessing it, 
please let me know so I can reshare and you can start launching these new sections of the curriculum at your school. It will also come with a short quiz of five questions. Um, we didn't design um, a case study or lesson plan for these new sections because uh, with the change um, caused by COVID, we think the more compact the section is, the better for you to adopt and teach it at your school or your workplace. But if you want to work with us to develop case study or uh, more extended exams or more questions or more materials to this model, please let me know so we can work together and, and you know, further um, develop this new model of sustainability education. So um, here on this slide, um, I'm very, very happy to present you about how far we um, have gone with sustainability education as of the moment. As of this month, we have so far 72 approved trainer around the world. And they um, comes from, so on the call today, I've got um, 20 of us, but this training will, no, I'm sorry, this meeting is also recorded. So um, it will be shared with trainers in 38 countries. Um, and this is super exciting for us because in the first few years of sustainable education, we can't imagine reaching this many trainers in these many countries. So thank you so much for being here today and thank you so much for applying to be a trainer of the course. Um, so moving a bit away from that, um, so by this month, meaning March, first we've, we are finishing the first quarter of 2021 and we have already taught over 3000 people, not for this year. For this year, we taught over uh, 700 people, but this, contributes to the number of over 3,000 people trained around the world. And we have the materials available in six different languages, English, Spanish, Portuguese, German, um, French, and Arabic. All these um, materials were translated by volunteers. And actually later today, I would like to uh, invite one of our volunteer on trainer um, I think she's based in Wales. <laughs> Ulrich, please feel free to, to correct me later uh, if I'm wrong about your country of residence. But she's also a German native and she has been so kind to have us translate the, the, the course into German. So, I just need to take a short break. <laughs> uh, how to register? your new wave of education as trainer. So, uh, so far the process is for you to reach out to me and um, drop me a message about your new wave of education with a start date. So I realized that this actually can take more of your time because I would need to come back to you and ask multiple questions. So the idea is to have a form where you can submit um, all the information for your training whenever you want to start it. So you. If you can scan the QR code, please go ahead and, and scan it so you have an idea of, of which information are requested from you. But um, I can just tell you briefly, we just need your name so we can trace it back to, to our record. Uh, the, the start date and the finish date of the course, how many students are you gonna um, educate? Um, which version of the curriculum are you gonna use? Which language would you use for, for the educations? So, you know, basic question that I always ask you in email. Now you can um, fill in the form and save your time in registering for your new course. So you don't need to wait for my approval or anyone's approval to start your course, of course. It's just for me to have a record and to reach out to you um, during the, the wave of education to provide support if needed. Yeah, so that's step one. I think I already went to step two, conduct the training during this time. Please feel free to reach out to me um, and Chef Chris. And I think um, at the end of this course, if at the end of this meeting, I'm sorry, if you agree, um, I can also share uh, the contact of the trainers. Um, so you can have um, an opportunity to exchange your knowledge and feedback with each other. 
if you agree to share your contact, of course, but um, we can look into that later. Uh, so that's it with step two, conduct the training. The next step, step three, is to share the evaluation form with the students at the end of the course. So uh, we created a new form that is hosted on Google Forms, so it's easily accessed by everyone, um, which uh, must be shared with your students by you at the end of the course. So the idea is, is for us to learn about the, the students' feedback about the course. Um, and also for us to have direct contact with the student and make sure that we get the right email address to deliver their certificate. So this is very important. Please make sure that you share the evaluation form with your students at the end of the course. Um, I, after you register your new way of training, the link to this evaluation form will be sent to your email by me, for sure. So uh, the next step is also to share the student list with WhatsApp office. Um, in this case, it will be me uh, to claim badges for students. So we do two-way verification. Um, first of all, we will have the evaluation form from the students. Um, then we will have the student list from you and then we will match the name of the student with the evaluation to make sure that um, um, no one can claim that they have completed the training um without taking it for um, in reality so that's the idea step five is to re receive your trainer certificate so um the trainer certificate will only be issued after you have completed your first way of, of training um this certificate will be valid for one year and it's renewable once you start a new wave of training if you have any questions about this certificate or um any step in this registration process please let me know in the chat box or in the q a box or even later in this call or via email whenever you feel comfortable um so about the certificate this is a sample uh, this is um, a sample certificate that was issued to me because i participated in chef chris Cupcake's journey um so um, as you can see, um, we can we can see the um, full name of the owner of the certificate on the certificate, and most importantly, the name and the location of training, because this is a way for us to recognize um, your students as well as you as a trainer on our certificate. We want to make sure that um, when the student shares the certificate, um people can see where and who by whom they take the training and i think this is a very important part of our training program it shows um that is a global program and it is contributed by trainers around the world not just washa um as an organization and on questions that i regularly re receive from the students as well as the chefs and the trainers is that uh how can we be sure about uh, the validation of the certificate. Um, there are two ways to do this. In WhatsApp Office, we are developing a page where you can search for the validation of a certificate by plugging in the full name or the email address of a person, but that is still being developed. Um, the second way, which is already available, is for you to visit the verified link at the bottom of the certificate issued by us. So if you visit the link, um, it will take you to um, a page hosted by yourclaim.com, which is our badge issue and client. You will be able to verify the full name of the certificate and badge earner. Uh, so that's the fastest way for you to know whether the certificate is legit. And, um, and yes, uh, please feel free to reach out if you have more questions about the certificate and how it works. So, by the way, um, one another exciting um, thing that we are developing in WhatsApp Office is to have a landing page where we can list uh, all the approved trainers uh, around the world. So we do this um, by uh, incorporating our WhatsApp account um, into your name 
um, on a very simple looking page on our Fita Planet website. It will be launched by the end of quarter two this year. So what I would need um, your help with as at the moment is to make sure that you have registered for a workshop account and update your information on this account. This way, by the time we have this page launch, we already have information um, and um, you as a trainer can reach out and verify and, and get in contact with all the trainers who are listed on our website. So, just want to take a little pause here to see if you have any questions. Let me stop uh, sharing my screen for a moment so I can see the Q and A. Yes, uh, Martin. Uh, Martin has a question about uh, whether there's a Dutch version available. No, we haven't got the Dutch version. Um, but if you can help us with translating the curriculum into Dutch, it would be awesome. Yes. So um, as you can see on the slide, we are now reaching the part where we want to hear from you and, and uh, your feedback with your experience about um, teaching the program. So I'm going to invite um, some of our trainer that I already got in touch before this meeting first to share the experience. Um, and then if you have story to tell, a question to ask, uh, please let me know by raising your hand using the raise hand button at the bottom of your Zoom um, window. Hello, Chef Terry. Hi, Lynn. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. So um, uh, as you can see, I did uh, a quick presentation at the school before with a slide about uh, sustainability educations. So um, would you mind telling us more about you and your school as well as your experience with the program in Namibia? All right. Um, Silver Spoon is, is a relatively young school. I mean, we've only been in operation for five years. And um, uh, currently, we are one of the few academies in Namibia that uh, culinary academies in Namibia that offer courses that are um, accredited outside of the borders of Namibia. So um, we pride ourselves on having a high standard of education. And we were very happy to be able to team up with uh, the world chefs uh, with as far as the sustainability is concerned, because we feel it's a very important um, factor that we need to consider, especially in a country like Namibia. Just to give you a little bit of information about Namibia itself, we have a population of about 2.5 million inhabitants. Um, the size of Namibia is currently 824,000 uh, kilometers, square kilometers. So we've, we've got quite a sparsely dense, uh, densely populated country, um, mainly because we're a, a desert and a semi-desert country. So our, um, when it comes to, to um, agriculture, we've got very limited resources as far as uh, crops are concerned. There's a very small area of Namibia that's, that's um, moist enough and has enough rainfall for us to produce crops. Um, so we rely a lot on importing of fruit and vegetables from countries like South Africa, um, Zambia, Botswana that are, are our neighbors. Um, but Animal husbandry is quite an important factor in Namibia. And um, what's on a positive side is we have the space, we have the, um, the, the, the land to farm. Um, a lot of our, our, our um, herds are hormone free, they are antibiotic free, so that, and they get to roam the pastures free without being um, in paddocks and corrals which means that we've got a much better quality meat um, and our meat is quite sought after. I mean, we export it to countries like Sweden, uh, Germany, um, the USA. So there's a high demand for, for, for meat from Namibia. Um, 
we've got a huge coastline, which is quite uh, which is quite impressive. I mean, we've got uh, the Atlantic Ocean covers a thousand five hundred kilometers um, from where South Africa ends and where Angola starts. We literally, I mean, if if I had to describe the map of Namibia, it looks something like this. Uh, actually, I need to do it this way. Yeah, so that you're seeing it right. Now here is South Africa, and here's the um, uh, here's the border to Botswana and uh, half of South Africa, Botswana, Zambia, and then on this side here is Angola. Um, here is the Atlantic Ocean. So um, you know we 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 we're quite fortunate in having a good coastline. Um, unfortunately, due to the fact that it's the uh, we've got the Benguela current, which is very unpredictable. Uh, fresh fish is is a is a very scarce commodity. It's it's very unpredictable as far as fishing is. Um, deep sea water fishing is is uh, quite uh, um, quite productive at the moment, but uh, not so much um, along the coast for um, catching fresh fish for the for the country itself. A lot of our fish is exported to South Africa um, by companies that operate from South Africa within the borders of Namibia. Um, and yeah, so we've we've uh, we've adopted the um, the sustainability program within our training and teachings of our students because we because of the fact that water is scarce, we feel it is vitally important that our students go out into the industry and are aware and are, are conscious about the fact that they need to uh, take care of our water needs, to take care of um, energy. Um, to uh, maximize the, the, the use of, of our natural products. The majority of our energy comes from coal. And at this point in time, I mean, coal is going to run out at some point. And we have, at the moment, we have a, um, a hydroelectric station, which is uh, up on the uh, border of uh, Angola. The, the waterfall actually falls in Angola and is kept in a dam in Angola. And due to a, an agreement between Angola and Namibia, we, we generate electricity, which uh, supplies part of southern Angola and uh, about 40% of, of uh, Namibia's uh, power supply. Um, we've, uh, we have a desalination plant, at the, uh, which has been established just outside um, a little um, town or the second largest uh, town in, in Namibia city. Uh, Swakopmund, and that supplies 35% of Swakopmund's uh, water supply, fresh water supply, yes. and also for the uh, mining industry. It supplies a lot of water for the mining industry. And there's, there's uh, projects to, to develop two more uh, desalination plants, one down in the south at a town called Luderitz, and one a little bit more north of, um, of uh, Swakopmund which will then supply the, uh, the northern part of the country with fresh water. The, the only two rivers that supply us with fresh water are on our borders. One is on the southern border with South Africa called the Orange River, and the one is on the northern border called the Kuneni. So um, it's, uh, it's very important that our students understand the, that we need to conserve electricity or energy. We need to conserve water. We need to make as much use out of our, our resources as possible in order to have resources for the, for the future. Saying that also, I mean, we've got a lot of uh, indigenous plants and a lot of indigenous products that we can use, but they are very, very reliant on the seasons and on good rainfall. If we don't have good rainfall, we don't get half of those, uh, of, of those products that we could use. Um, so it is very important for us as educators to educate not only our students, but we're also trying to incorporate, um, trying to get other businesses involved, um, hotels and lodges, uh, guest houses, especially the, uh, the establishments that are out in the rural areas where we, uh, we want to try and educate them to understand that we need to use biodegradable products. We need to make, uh, make use of, uh, make sure that our water supplies are kept as clean as possible, um, that we utilize sun and wind as uh, alternative energy supplies rather than electricity. Um, and unfortunately, and we, were, we were on a fast track to get uh, uh, a couple of the 
lodges, bigger lodge companies or groups involved in sustainability training last year, and then we had COVID. So unfortunately, that's been put on hold until they are operational again. Because a lot of those businesses have been closed for the last 14, 14 13, 14 months, um, and will uh, are only looking to open near the end of this year. So once we get that in, that back on track, then we can start uh, educating not only our students, but the uh, hospitality industry in general on the importance of uh, sustainability so that we can leave something for our children, for our grandchildren that they can appreciate. That's wonderful, Chef Tari. I, I have to say that's a very, very in-depth explanation of Namibia and your program and the importance of it. Um, I have to say all the thing I know about Namibia, I learned from you and I, I <laughs> today, and I truly appreciate that. Um, just a quick follow-up questions. Um, do you have to adapt the material a lot to teach at your school? Do you add a lot of case study? And I, I believe you, you need to, to teach your student a lot about the local geography and what natural resources you have. Yes, what we do is, is uh, we, we, as we're giving the course, I, um, I also give them uh, time to, to actually go and research what, what does Namibia do as far as uh, um, water conservation is concerned. Um, and also get them to, to understand that, uh, you know, this is not only an issue that is worldwide, um, it's an issue that is here at home that they need to look first at home before they look at what the rest of the world is doing. Um, we, you know, what's nice is I can give them examples uh, that are on the positive side. We make, a, make use of our, uh, all the meat that we use here is um, locally sourced. Um, we, when we buy our vegetables, we buy from a, uh, from a supplier who sources local as much as possible. Um, so I can take them to, to the butcher and I can take them to the uh, greengrocer and I can say, this is where I, he can explain to them where he sources his vegetables from and why he sources at that time of the year. Um, we've, we've done, uh, what's, what's also a positive is that with animal husbandry, there's, there are uh, Namibian meat, there's no, um, there, no hormones are used, um, no, uh, uh, antibiotics to the animals they are um, a lot of the animals are, are um, accustomed to the climate and there's now a big push in Namibia for the only African cattle breed um, which is called the Nguni it's a much smaller cattle but it's disease resistant it's drought resistant um, and we use that as an example of farmers that are now reverting back to products or um, um, livestock that that are from Africa and uh, have adapted to the, uh, the environment in, in, in Africa and can sustain us um, as far as meat pro product production is concerned because they use less, it's less effort to, to breed them. It's less effort to uh, in maintain their condition due to the fact that they are a, a um, sturdy and a uh, drought resistant uh, breed of cattle. Um, so, and we also get the odd, uh, well, there's a, there's a breed of um, sheep as well that are, are very, very drought resistant, uh, disease resistant, which we, uh, which we have in Namibia. I'm just trying to think of the name of it. It's a, uh, I'll think of it just now. <laughs> but it's also, you know, we use those as examples of the positives um, of looking to forward into sustainability, rely on what, um, what we can produce, which is hardy and which is, uh, 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 basically animals and, and produce that are used to the, or, or, or for these conditions and we can take them in. We've got a lot of indigenous ingredients that half of, half of the population, they, they may taste them, try them, they may eat them sometimes, but they don't understand where they come from or why they are found in those areas. So we use, we incorporate that as well, where um, I will go out and I will look for uh, live plants, bring them back and say to them, do you know what this is? Do you know how to cook it? Um, do you know what, what nutritional value it, in, um, it, it produces? So 
we try as much as possible to, to add as many practicals to the training as possible, just to, to also um, tie it in with, with what, what we can do here in Namibia. And by, by helping Namibia become more sustainable, we're helping the rest of the world become more sustainable. Yes. Thank you so much for, for the great example that you give about the program you're doing in, in Namibia. And I think that Chris, Chef Chris, is joining us from the airport. I, I am. <laughs> hello, everybody. Uh, and hello, hello, Lynn. And, and I, I uh, Terry, that was, that was great listening to what you're doing. So I just, I have to say, first of all, um, hello to everybody. Secondly, I wish I could have been on this uh, correctly and not sitting in an airport before I run to a flight, but there's this pesky thing called work that gets in the way sometimes. <laughs> and so uh, I had to uh, change a flight to, uh, to this morning at the last minute. But anyways, I just wanted to say a couple quick words to everybody because first of all, thank you for being here. Lynn, thank you for taking the reins. I mean, you know, you're amazing as everybody knows. Um, but you know, I, I, I just want to say a huge thank you and a shout out to everybody here because you all are the people who have signed up to make the biggest difference. And, you know, we can teach um, and we can, you know, push the message, which we continue to do because we have to do things differently in this world. We just, we have to. And I think chefs can be um, really at the center of that. But all of you are taking it to the next step. And it's, and it's through all of your activities that we will be able to reach the tens of thousands of people that we intend to reach. Because, you know, if we sort of look at this like geometric growth, right? So, I mean, you know, one of you talks to, you know, I don't know, 30 people. And those 30 people maybe talk to each to five. And then, you know, and all of a sudden we go from just a few of us to truly a global movement. And you all are at the center of that. And I just, you know, I want to say thank you. I also want to let you know that we certainly intend to do more of these conversations. And, and really, we want them to be conversations. We want to hear what you're up to. We want to hear how it's going. We want to hear, you know, what's been successful, um, what hasn't been successful. Many times when we run into problems and we have, and we have you know, challenges, um, those are some of the best learning experiences, as we know from the kitchen, right? I mean, it's, you know, when we make that dish and it doesn't come out right, sometimes we learn more than if it was perfect. So, you know, we want to hear from you. And, and hopefully through these conversations, we all can be inspired by what each of us are doing. And, you know, hopefully we can learn something from each of you. Um, you know, how we at, at World Chefs, you know, and sort of the, the, the you know, main office in Paris, I'm, I'm not in Paris, I'm in Chicago, but how we can do things better, how we can do things, you know, differently. It's always about improvement. So please let us know what you're hearing on the ground. If you have a great idea where you, you know, somebody says something to you, like, wouldn't it be cool if, uh, let us know. <laughs> so that's all I really wanted to say this morning. Um, and I'm always encouraged just by the number of people who, who have, you know, decided to, to work with us on this all of you and and the fact that you're truly a global force um that's that's so encouraging because this is working and we are seeing massive interest um in sustainability and and you all are driving that so that's all i, I really wanted to say while i run to my flight <laughs> but um but thank you all a any quick questions for me or, or comments i and I'm going to, by the way, we'll go back and listen to this whole recording. So I, I can't wait to do that. Any, any comments, thoughts, questions? I think not yet, but I have uh, one remark. Very nice mask, Chris. Very stylish. <laughs> I think we can all agree. You know, I've, I've had both of my vaccines now. Um, and I, I, I technically don't need it, but we all wear it still. And uh, we have to wear it. Um, and I'm so tired of wearing masks. I, 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 I have these, Lynn, I have these, these fantasies of, of all of us getting together at the next no. world show, you know, Congress. Yeah. And, and all of us getting in a room, right. And, and being like taking our, we're not wearing masks and being able to, to, to talk. And, and that is something also, by the way, that Lynn and I have been talking about is that when we do the next Congress, we absolutely uh, want to find time, you know, to meet with this community 
because you guys are are you know as we say that you know the boots on the ground you're the ones who are who are helping so um you know we we just I, I can't say thank you enough i mean this makes me so very very happy and we're making a difference so thank you chris for for taking your time from the it's airport for you. it's very very hectic <laughs> at the airport and i'm so glad that you can just call in and enjoy us for for a short moment um so i just wanted to do a quick introduce of all the chefs that are on screen with us right now so we already talked to chef terry um, then we have Chef Ulrich from Wales. I see the, the Wales flag, so now I'm sure where she is. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one who translated the, the curriculum into German. So um, I'll be sure to, to ask her to share her experience later. And then right next to her, we have Chef Mumtasu Masud from Egypt. He has been one of the most active trainers since the beginning of 2021. No, actually, I'm sorry, Chef. Um, you have been active since last year you have joined all the classes and so far you have done five ways of education and that's phenomenal um i would get to to ask you a few questions later um in today's sessions and then last but not least we have also chef haitam hasun um in turkey um on screen he has been constantly doing training since the beginning of this year and also one of our most active trainers so uh, very glad to hear from you um, in this call. So, going back to you, Auric, can you um, tell me a little bit more about yourself? I don't think I know enough. Yeah. And my experience <laughs> translating yeah. material to German. Of course. So, um, I'm, as um, Lynn said, I'm based in Wales, originally from Germany, um, but been over here for quite some time, and I um, work within work based learning. So I'm not directly in the kitchen, but I basically uh, deliver national vocational qualifications um, across Wales um, to people all across um, hospitality in the kitchen, but also front of house. Um, so I'm sort of very much embedding part of the curriculum um, of the sustainability curriculum into our curriculum sort of as a supportive thing, I think in particular at the moment, of course, um, as sort of Wales are slowly starting to come out of lockdown and um, restaurants um, are due to reopen for outdoor dining um, later on in April now, um, depending on how numbers are developing. So, of course, there is going to be a very big drive into more of the financial awareness and, of course, ultimately the sustainability and the awareness around the sustain sustainability will help drive that. And um, similar, like um, sort of, you know, Chef Terry said earlier on, of course, hospitality, it has been a little bit more difficult to really integrate them in, over the last year. But I guess it's been more been about um, opening people's eyes to it and making them aware of how many little changes we can do already in our own personal life at home. And then once we've changed how we do things at home, how we then that that inevitably will change how we then do things at work as well because we are much more aware of it. Um, so um, so I said so I've sort of been really sort of trying to integrate it and make it more of a natural thing for people to think about to be aware of. Um, and um, you know of course we have. I think Wales and like we have obviously like when it comes to um, lamb, Wales is renowned for for its lamb meat. We have quite a lot of produce um, and there is also very much um, a big drive of um, well-known chefs of using more local products. But um, a lot of the people I work with um, are part of a national um, sort of brand and chain. So of course, they're a lot more restricted as to what they can buy in and where they get their produce from. But regardless, of course, you know, them using those produce sensible and um, keeping an eye on, for example, food waste and things like that has been really good. Um, I've also obviously flagged up the food waste challenge to a couple of my um, chefs in particular who've really sort of uh, taken that um, on board in particular now sort of with reopening of the restaurants where they're introducing that and hitting the ground running. So it's been really interesting sort of to to just open people's eyes, not just back of house, but also front of house. And uh, in some cases, sort of with management people as well, to really show that we can all do something. Um, you know, we all have our part to play. And, you know, and if you just have one or two people per site that I'm in that have that sort of, you know, that have that awareness, that will then spread to the rest of the team. 
um, who will then share it and hopefully practice it at home as well. So, um, yeah, and obviously Lynn mentioned I've um, done the translation of the curriculum into German, which was actually really quite eye opening. And I think when you're translating something like that, you delve into it a lot deeper um, because I think um, because it's sort of it's such such an intricate topic ultimately it's so um so important and like i i actually really enjoyed sort of delving into it thinking about which words to use it has been challenging at times i said i've been over here about 12 years so um my german is a little bit rusty at times um but it's been really great and i think it's important to really make it accessible to as many people as possible um in particular in their native language because I think some of the terminology, like I really had, like I knew of the terminology because I live in an English speaking country, but I wouldn't necessarily know in how far people would be aware of that English terminology if they would hear it as someone who has not been exposed sort of to living in a foreign country. So I think it's really important um, to sort of to really drive that. And I know it, it has taken some time and it probably took longer than I anticipated it was going to take. But I think for someone who is thinking about it, I would recommend giving it a go um, because I think you you learn the curriculum much more in depth to a different level where you almost don't have to really read through it or prepare for your sessions because you know exactly what is required as part of the curriculum because you've translated it. So like I can definitely like if there anyone is out there thinking about it, I, I can definitely recommend doing it. Um, and just giving it a go um I said because it's been it's been really quite rewarding and you know i'm I'm sort of looking forward to maybe getting a bit more involved with um doing some training sessions in German as well so hopefully we'll be able to to get something going there as well that's such a good news thank you so much Ulrich, for for all the work that you've done and um uh I'm very excited to hear that you had a great experience translating the curriculum into German is not an easy task at all um, I attempt myself, so I'm Vietnamese by nationality, uh, is my native language, and I attempt myself to spend some time to translate it into Vietnamese, and I have to say it's not an easy task. So thank you for, for taking on uh, such a challenge, and uh, please do let yeah. me know if I can support somehow. I don't speak German. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I still haven't learned German yet, but I would love to support if, if possible. So please do let me know. Uh, Chris, do you want to say something? I just wanted to say a quick thank you very much because everybody thinks translation's easy. <laughs> it is absolutely not easy and it is really, really time consuming as somebody who's done it before. So um, a huge thank you to you. And, uh, and I also appreciate your, you know, your sort of challenge to everybody else, you know, and that is, you know, could you help us translate it into other languages? So I just wanted to say thank you. And I'm about to get on my plane, so I'll keep listening. Thank you. I appreciate it. I said, you know, it's it's been really rewarding, and um, and I think it's great to be part of something, sort of bigger, of something international, and sort of you know, um, do my bit, where I'm you know not as actively in the kitchen anymore as I used to be. Um, so it's great to sort of to still be able to to fly the flag for air yeah, sustainability slightly differently now. That's wonderful. So um, I think we're running a bit out of time. So I, I just want to, to interview one of the chefs that have been on screen with us the whole time uh, since the beginning of the feedback session, Chef Montasser. Um, yeah, or you will have to sign out, I, I remember. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Chef Montasser, so yes. uh, thank you so much for, for joining me again. I remember last week when I joined your class in the evening, it was a great experience to see um, so many faces of, of chefs on the screen and they were all so focused at your online yes, platforms. Really. So yes, can, you, really. can you please tell me more, tell us more about your experience teaching five ways of sustainability education online. How do you interact with your student? what are the challenges and what are the advices that you, you want to give us? Thank you very much for you and the, the group for the training. Uh, I hope you hear my voice right. Uh, first uh, training first uh, training I give to people is 20. Give me mood bad, 
because it's only 20 people. How I can get these people? Uh, a lot of me, I think you will have a lot. Second one, I have uh, 75. I'm happy a little bit. Until now, uh, seven, eight, seven, 125 uh, court uh, session. Last session is 300 and people is over. And you know, this uh, Zoom, you cannot take you uh, alone. I believe something I reading in the, in the material with the social responsibility. I think social responsibility is just one of the key elements for the Arab people. Because now his vision for the Arab people is uh, uh, 2030, is a change the mind of the people care about the water, you know, the problem of the water now, they take care about the electric, take care about gas, you take care about food, you take care about the fish, you take care about food. Uh, I think it's all come together, like uh, somebody you make it uh, mag magister or something you make master, you know. If you take this course, uh, people, you have open mind for him, the change is the mind for him. He, He's coming as a chef, cutting uh, mise en place. And when you go from the course, I, I see the people, uh, you look in your church about the video, you talk about the client, you talk, uh, you talk to me sometimes in Facebook, it, you tell me the, the climb, you tell me about the weather, the weather exchange. If you have less one uh, over one, you will water will coming to, good water and the people now it's uh, I think the uh, stability of the education you give to Arab people a lot this even me even started from me so always I talk to you always you have between me and the you emails maybe two or three I know I make it headache but believe me you make it something is amazing the uh, something you know, just learning, just learning. You change people. You change the idea of the people. If you go to the kitchen, you cannot run in the water. As Hassab say, go to want to make it defrost uh, fish, make it water uh, running. Now you stop it. Now you say, uh, sorry for Hassab. You say, uh, now I can take it one day early. I save the water for the new, new generation. People, you have now ideas. I tell you, 700 people, you take this course. 700 people, you change his mind. 700 people, you change his life in home, in the street, in, in, in the cafe, in work. I think you transfer the knowledge for his friend. You would like to appreciate it. I have something. I have something you don't know. You, you stay with his friend, then you talk to him. I see this. This, I think, is that people now change the idea. Even, I know, Europe, you have a standard, you know, but the government now, in, 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 you support us for new capital in Egypt. You would like to make it this ability of everywhere, for the garbage, for everywhere. Because right. if you know about, the, if you know about the new capital of Egypt, now you would like to make it less. I think in Dubai, you try to, to already have uh, uh, the way, Saudi so Arabia has the way, but people, chef, you don't know. Now you bring for the chef the idea. Thank you for this. Thank you for all the group you work in. I think my, 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 my colleague in the trainer, you find this. When first, first, first uh, lecture, you will people think about something else. You think today we're cutting, today we're cooking, today we'll talk about something. But when you go deeper, deeper, I think it's this uh, responsibility about the education is very important. Uh, you change, you save the cost. You can take this idea. Some people after the training, you talk to me, say the, the cost, I say, if you save water, if you in your uh, restaurant, if you save water, if you save energy, if you save, uh, food, if you get it food right from government or for a farmer, if you, if you, if you less uh, with, 
you'll you'll have put uh, save cost. Now people think people bring idea. Last uh, last course with uh, you already. Thank you a lot. And uh, I cannot uh, say feeling how the people, uh, uh, even you and Mr. Thomas, you already attend. Because you know, Mr. Thomas, you have a lot of Arab people in, 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 in country, Arab people, you know him fam famous for, he is famous for already, he's a star. But the people, he believe him when you come with us and he believe you when you come with us. People, I think you uh, give us a chance to learn the people, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you for my colleague uh, uh, in Namibia, chef, everywhere, the, everywhere in German and everything. But uh, you do a lot than him because you know, maybe in Namibia, same like Egypt. But when you get the course, you have the Tunisian, you have, uh, you have Morocco, you have Libya, you have Egypt, you have Saudi Arabia, you have Kuwait, you have Iraq, you have Jordan, you have Palestine. This, this many people now coming to understand. I think Zoom, you make a lot for us. I think you, this right time in uh, Corona 19, the people now change the idea. Maybe I cannot do something, I can do something. I can do something for the, the, the public. I can do the, something for in the future for people, my son, my my daughter, my I can do something. Even if you I cannot make it something in my work, you will do, you will do. I tell him you will do. Talk to your manager, talk your FMB, talk your bring him the material, go to him, explain to him, get benefit from the garbage. I tell him, get benefit from the garbage. You can make the plastic, you can make it. A glass, you can make it the food, you can sell this after you can get the food, get the money to give poor people to get the food. Thank I you think so much, you do for, it. For, for, for the sharing. Sorry, I, I'm uh, make it longer. I'm very sorry. <laughs> no worry, but I, I understand your enthusiasm. Yeah. Because yeah. I can tell that that the development of, um, of your training throughout the ways, like you started with um, a smaller number of students. I, I remember it was 45 to 50, 60 students, and now you educated a wave of 290 students. That was really impressive. And thank you so much for your great work, and please continue to do so. Um, I'm very happy to be in touch with you every week, and I, I love to receive updates from you about the program. So please do stay in touch and don't hesitate to reach out if you have um, any question, any story to share, any photos. I remember you did send me a, a picture of the cake that you have, which is yeah, yeah. You can talk. You can, Mrs. Lina. You can talk. You can talk about this by yourself, Peter. You <laughs> see the people. What happened? You can explain. You have the the big challenge. You have everything. That's that's lovely. I I would love to be able to like to join you in person someday. But thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, I see that Chris, you are still you know, with us on the plane. <laughs> Do you want to just? So yeah, I, uh, I, of course I'm going to come. Well, sorry, one second. But I, I just wanted to say, Chef, listening to you talk, I, I'm I'm smiling behind my mask. <laughs> so um, to all of you, this is so encouraging and. Um, I just, I can't say enough uh, thank you. And, and one day when, when we can move around a little bit more with the pandemic passing us, I can't wait to visit some of your programs and, and see what you're doing firsthand because it's really incredible. So just a huge shout out, a huge thank you to everybody. And I'm gonna sign off here because uh, I'm on the airplane. <laughs> so, can I tell you something, Chef, you. please? Sip, sip. Okay. Yes. Go, can go I ahead. tell you something? Really, Chef, you change our mind in Arab country. This, uh, Really, 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 I contact you many times and I uh, attend for all, but you changed uh, the mind of Arab people for stability. Thank you, Chef, very much. You make it something amazing. You don't feel it, but I feel it. People will send it. Thank you for you. And um, this is Lena, Chef Thomas, all group. Thank you, sir. Good trip Thank for you. you. Yes. Good trip Thank for you, you sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Makes me smile. Guys, take care. And, and once again, thanks everybody. And I can't wait to do this soon when I'm not on an airplane. Bye-bye.
So I, I understand that we already reached the end of the time that I book on your calendar is already three, but there's, um, if possible, I would like to ask for an additional 15 minutes of your time. If you have other meeting to go to, please, um, please don't hesitate to move forward. I will share with you a recording of the sessions, but I have one more chef that I invited to be a panelist to share his experience, which is Chef Hightown. And I have a few questions in the Q and A box. So I just want maybe 15 minutes more of your time if possible. So Chef, uh, Chef Hightown, well, welcome back to, to the camera. Um, I actually have never met you in person, but I have exchanged a lot of email with you about the course of, um, of study that you've done with your student. Can, can you please tell us more about you and, and your experience, the challenges that you have encountered teaching the course? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm happy to be with you. It's an honor uh, to be a, one of uh, this awesome uh, team. Uh, I am from Iraq, uh, but I uh, live in Turkey because my work here in Turkey. Uh, and now I'm in my work. <laughs> uh, uh, when I attend the first uh, uh, webinar, I really think uh, about my uh, people in my homeland, Arabic uh, people, who can't understand or speak English. So they can't uh, attend any webinars or understand what happened. Then I decide to transfer this knowledge and this experience and this new uh, 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 lessons uh, to them to make them know what happened around. Then I work hard after I have my uh, lessons to be a trainer. It's a, a honor, a big honor to me. So. Uh, I work hard to uh, uh, translate too many photos, too many sources, and make many videos uh, to make my lessons uh, more acceptable and more enjoyed, uh, more simple. So then I invite them to, uh, to my lessons with a simple word, uh, what they can really understand and really uh, uh, acceptable for them. Uh, I start with about uh, 50 students from uh, many uh, Arab countries, online teaching. Uh, then I, uh, I have uh, too many uh, asks to uh, be with me in the next waves. Uh, then I have uh, too many professional chefs, uh, too many uh, beginners, too many home cookers, uh, too many uh, universities students, they like to know what happened and they, they like to uh, be with me in this uh, uh, awesome uh, program. Uh, so I work hard to, uh, uh, to make them all in my lessons. Then I have uh, 18, then have I, I now uh, in the last uh, 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 course, I have uh, about 100 and, I, uh, and now I have a lot of asks to be with me in next courses, hundreds of uh, asks really uh, from uh, many uh, specialized, not uh, only chefs interested. This is the awesome things. Uh, uh, engineers like to know, uh, doctors like to know, uh, uh, students like to know, uh, too many uh, uh, people like to know what happened around the world. Simply, I uh, told them uh, uh, in my lessons after uh, they see my translated photos and my translated uh, videos with my uh, Arabic simple lessons, I just told them, uh, imagine the world, the nature, as a beautiful woman. <laughs> so, uh, as long as you treat, treat it more, as long as you as have more fun. So you must treat our natures. Our nature is our life. You must keep our sources to, uh, uh, to keep uh, live with a very good uh, uh, sources, uh, uh, healthy sources. This is the simple uh, uh, lessons what I gave them. 
and have uh, too many uh, uh, students very happy with this uh, lessons, with this uh, new knowledge, and I follow them uh, after the lessons and after they have the certificate and know what happened after that in, the, in them works, in them restaurants, in them homes, in them universities, and a lot of them share with me a new dishes for them. Uh, uh, as the uh, new uh, knowledge they know, uh, more vegetables, uh, uh, blades, uh, more healthy uh, plates, uh, more the trait, uh, more uh, trading with the, the West. So I'm happy to, to hear that from them. And um, really that make me keep working hard to make them better and to transfer this uh, experience and this new knowledge, uh, world knowledge, to them, to my people, to my uh, uh, Arab uh, students who can't speak and understand English to be with, with us anywhere. Uh, I don't want to, to, make, to take a long uh, time uh, because I'm the last one <laughs> and I also have my work now, uh, but I really thank you to, uh, and make me here with you today and always for this uh, awesome program with this awesome team. And I would like to thank you personally, uh, Ms. Lina. Uh, uh, you are uh, a really uh, very kindly uh, cooperation, very, very uh, uh, great help for me personally. Uh, always answer my emails, always answer my questions, always. Uh, help me to be better with my students, uh, to have uh, trust them, and they trust me to be honored with them. And I will be always faithful and sincere uh, trainer uh, with you and with my students. Thank you very much. I hope to see you again next time. It's honestly a pleasure to work with you. And thank you so much for taking your time from work to, to speak with us today. Um, thank you. Yes, I, actually, there's one more chef that I invited to, to speak today as, as um, he has been hiding a little in the background. So sorry that I didn't uh, promote you to be a panelist over to show your camera. Um, unfortunately, we are also a little bit running out of time. So Chef Noor, if, if you can just give a short, short speech about yourself and your experience um, in the course, it will be great. I think you have to unmute yourself. Yes. Hello, Chef. Oh, I, I don't think I can hear you. Maybe your audio is not connected properly. Um, so just to give a little bit of background about Chef Norby before um, we um, hear him share his experience. Chef Norby is the director of Smile Kitchen, um, a culinary training school in Palestine. He has joined us as a trainer since the beginning of, of 2021. And so far he has done one training, if I remember well, one or two training program with his student in Palestine. And so far I have received great feedback from his student about um, the, the class and uh, how much they learned um, throughout the seven days. So, Chef Noor, if um, are you okay with your audio? Seems like it doesn't work still. Maybe if it's possible, can you lock out and try to lock in again in the meantime to save time for all the training on the call? I would like to address some of the questions that I received in the Q and A box. Um, so, first of all. A uh, question from Matthew, uh, for classes that are already in progress, do we need to register online using the process that is previously described in the presentation? The answer is um, yes, it would be great if you can re-register using the same process. I can send you a link again to register. It would take um, less than three minutes of your time. So um, please do help me by re-registering your course um, using the same link. Um, a question from Chef Rodrigo Duat. Can we host the course um, in our e-learning platform because there's still no physical contact? The answer is yes. Um, in the registration form, there's um, 
section where you can indicate the format of your lesson, whether is it online or offline. So you just need to let me know that it's an online program. Um, the idea is maybe we can join you online for one of the sessions um, to show support. We can share with you some additional uh, material that is easier to send to the student online. Uh, so yes, please feel free to conduct e-learning and let us know. Then uh, from Martin, is it possible as a trainer to get access to the text or assessment made uh, in Google form? Yes, so I described the evaluation from uh, four students that all the trainer need to share with them at the end of the course. And yes, you will see the evaluation from your student. Um, I would not automatically send it to trainer at the end, um, but if you request, I, I would send it to you, um, partly because it will take me some time to separate and organize um, the answer of the student. So please let me know if you want to look at the evalu evaluation so I can plug it on my to-do list. And um, another question from Chef Wilson Collette. So uh, all or link, we will be discussing eight module then to the student. Yes, so previously we have um, the old version of sustainability, sustainability education has seven modules and just um, in December last year, we updated a new uh, module called nutrition. So um, you can choose to start with, with all eight modules or you can choose to start with seven of them first. It's totally up to you. But if you need more details about how to, um, how to work on the new model, please let me know. We already did um, a short training for it. Um, but if you still have questions, feel free to reach out. So I think that's all the questions. Oh yes, uh, Chef Rodrigo has another question. Are the first seven model unchanged? We have our own translation. Uh, basically, um, we did uh, a quick revamp. Uh, we updated some of the statistics, um, some of the chart and figure are now refreshed to be more up to date uh, for 2021, because actually when we worked on the previous version of the curriculum, it was, I think, three to four years ago, and we have more recent research now that we updated to the presentations. I can send you once again, Chef Rodrigo, the link to the curriculum. So you can do a quick um, match. And please do let me know um, if there's anything that needs to be modified or changed. Uh, so yes, that's all the questions that I have. I see that Chef uh, Noor uh, joined us again. Hi, Chef. Seems like it still doesn't work. <laughs> I think maybe you do have to drop a, a quick message in the chat box. I, I can have you read it out loud. I think I asked for uh, 15 minutes of, of all the trainers time and we are running out of time. So maybe if you can just drop a message to everyone. <laughs> I'm so sorry for, for this, but um, we will have the next trainer meetup in uh, three months. Our idea is to organize such trainer, um, such meetup, such meeting regularly at least three times per year. So um, next time, uh, let's 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 test the audio and video to make sure that I can hear from you, Chef. Um, so Chef Noor said that we are proud to be. <laughs> Sorry, I'm babysitting today, so <laughs> if you can hear the laugh. <laughs> Uh, so thank you so much for joining me today um, in this trainer meetup. Uh, I I feel very honored to uh, support you throughout your trainings. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I will be sending you the recording of today's sessions together with the presentation that I previously shared. Um, there's also a few more materials that I will include in my follow-up email. Um, and um, if you see any information that has already been described in today's meeting that I um, haven't shared in my follow-up email, please do let me know. Thank you so much for, for, for today and I wish you a wonderful time.
So as you know, it's, it's still sending some more message um, in the chat. So basically he say, um, he, we are very proud to be with you from the Palestine, from Gaza Strip. And now we are, um, when now our four, our students, four of them are from Dubai. So not just in Palestine. They say it's very important that they learn about sustainability and we will continue um, with the training, I suppose. And uh, with the, your first way had a uh, 24 student and the chef hope that they will have more and more students in the next trainings. Thank you so much. So um, I guess that brings us to the end of, of today's sessions. Thank you so much chef for, for spending your time with me. Um, wish to see you soon and uh, please stay in touch by email in the meantime. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you very much, thank you.